hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel i am quite sad because i had already started <laughs> shooting this video but i don't know what happened to the light when i checked luckily i just shot a like a short clip like five minutes but the light wasn't that good i hope it doesn't happen again hope it doesn't happen again but as you guys can tell from the title of today's video i am doing a chit chat get ready with me um video topic of today is the lessons learned things that i liked and that i didn't like so much about saudi arabia promise guys this is the last time this is the last time i'm going to be talking about saudi i'm sure you guys are sick up to here with me and my saudi trip but i had to do this just to summarize everything down i have just washed my face and toned it and moisturized it the toner that i use is my girl's sapphire demis you know how it do my girl is uh releasing a new product i don't know when yet but um it has been gone for testing or something like that so she just got the samples and you guys stay tuned for that and i did apply her spf day cream and i have put on something you can never have too much spf guys on your skin right right now let me see if this light is still doing nonsense good so guys i was saying that um sorry if you see me looking here i'm looking at my notes i didn't make some notes because i'm filming a lot and rambling a lot so i'm looking at that and i'm looking at my mirror i do have my mirror right here and i am going to be looking a lot sorry guys at um my products so okay guys before i begin their makeup or anything I saw this tweet this morning, a series of tweets though. This girl, I don't know if it's a girl or a boy or a man, uh, but this person said that um, they wish to see a normal girl, nine to five working girl, is really happy kind of that lives in an apartment that just does normal life things on YouTube. They wish to see more of that. And then Anita Musa, shout out. I love Anita so, so much. I am a subscriber of her channel and I'm also a follower of her Instagram and Twitter and TikTok. So she, she was just commenting on that, that Twitter works based on, uh, on an algorithm. If I see that on my channel, my mostly watched videos are luxury videos, then sadly that is the type of content that I am going to push. And if Omiklali, they can afford those luxury products, then they go buy them, they make videos about them, and you guys eat them up. But we come up here and we are struggling to get to even 4,000 watch hours so that we can be monetized because you, you guys don't watch our content. Sadly, the content creators that can afford to make videos about what you guys seem to enjoy, then that's what they are going to do. So guys, please watch our videos, please like our content because we are striving to be the normal 9 to 5 girls that every other 9 to 5 -er can relate to on YouTube. We cannot all be luxury content creators, but it seems like that's what you guys are supporting and that's what you guys are eating up. And if you guys are not, then let's sit on our numbers. Let's sit as well. So yeah. That was my mini rant, excuse my nails, but I'm gonna sort them out. I'm gonna sort them out. I'm gonna sort them out. All right, guys, I don't live alone, so I was just listening. But what's going on? I am gonna start with my brow gel. This is my Hermosa Flow, very old brow gel. I need to upgrade and get a new Hermosa gel. So you shake it up in my bed, and I have made it wet a bit uh, with some water and yeah 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 so guys um number one 
on my list, list, list of the of whatever about Saudi. Number one is the fact that I said yes. I raised my hand at the office when that opportunity came. Like, if you are a person that knows me on a personal level, uh, you would know that I am quite reserved or shy in a in a in a in a professional setting or in a in a social setting where I have to like put my hand up. So I was quite impressed with myself for doing that because knowing myself, like that was that was not me. Like it was so unlike me to do that. So I was very proud of myself and I was like, girl, who do you think you are? But I was like, I'm the girl that I think I am. And that worked out for me. So I was just thinking about that recently that sometimes we are the ones that close the doors on our faces before the world even does by not taking up the opportunities that come because you think, no, my other colleague deserves it. No, Uban Ban deserves it. I don't. Why? So myself putting, putting up my hand at that moment in the office and then my other team, like mates, my colleagues, they're like, go for it. Why not? So it was like, you see, you see, I was like, good. And if I didn't do that and none of my colleagues wanted to like take up the opportunity and then that um, thing ended up going to waste, I was going to come home and be saying, yo, no, it's about where you're done. No, 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 no. And when I'm being asked, and then why didn't she say so? Why didn't you put up your hand? And I'm like, yo, hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. So guys, stop doing that. Don't you interest. Stop shutting the doors before they're even shut. On your face let the world the world do that the world is cruel enough so don't 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 be your own hater don't do that so i am going to be doing my brows guys i don't know how i'm going to manage doing my brows on camera but i am gonna try number two is i'm just that's not number two. Let me just say that's 1.5. The whole process of a visa application is not fun. So if you are planning on traveling overseas and you've never been, the visa process alone is a mess. And I was lucky enough because I was getting assistance from my boss at work. But mm -mm, I highly do not recommend but okay, I'm also proud that I did that and we got that out of the way and I actually got my visa in time. So, yeah, the whole... The visa process, guys, is not... Um, pop and flay, isn't it? Pop and flay, So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And number two, if I can say number two, I am proud of like actually traveling from Port Elizabeth to Saudi Arabia all alone. I'm really, really proud of that. I'm sorry, guys, if you can't see me now, I just have to line this brows. Um, so I'm really, really proud of doing that. That took like a lot of guts because I was going to be the only person traveling from our office to Saudi all alien. So very, very, very proud of myself for that. And it's not just traveling to Saudi. I'm like, I'm going to another country, an Arabic country, like a foreign, foreign country. For it, I'm sweating, guys. Let me open the windows a bit. A foreign Arabic Muslim country that doesn't speak a dash of English. So. I'm really, really proud of myself for actually doing that. Now I'm going to be cleaning up my brows and actually giving them shape. 
what am i going to be using the girls girl la girl pro concealer i just love putting it at the back of my hand i don't like uh applying it using this oh some room banner guys we have been load shitty so the edge is just coming back but i don't know how that light will work let me see using this la gold pro concealer and i don't like cleaning them using the concealer applicator i do use the sponges yep the extra footing look this is like a package of sponge that i got from this kim so guys as i was saying where was i i don't even remember where was i who am i going to apply i'm going to be applying um my concealer using this avon concealer brush thingy so upon arrival there were like a few people that gave me like um uh, guys i'm sweating like tips on what to do and what not to do in Saudi, yada yada yada, blah blah blah. So, and I also went online, so you uh, that's like a tip to also go online and find out all the information that you want to know about the specific country that you're traveling to. So, I did that, and um. What I mostly did was to go on TikTok and here on YouTube, like search for for content creators like me that just traveled to Saudi and how their experience was. So most of the videos that I saw here on YouTube and on TikTok, they eased my, my stress. Like they showed me that Saudi was quite a cool country than what it used to be before and it was actually pretty cool that what uh some of the people that told me it would be so and also getting there and experiencing it myself it was amazing guys so all the theories that people were telling me and all their experience or whatever and there was nothing like that like I had a very great time i had a good time i had some challenges of course but to summarize it all my trip was amazing so um the people there let's say day one i needed i didn't buy a sim card or exchanged my cash to the local currency not sure if you guys can recall from one of my videos or whatever but i didn't do that and i also had a laptop charge i needed to get a laptop charger because the um, the plug that we use in south africa is not the same as what they use in saudi so i had to get that so i had to get a laptop charger on that day i remember I had to get a laptop charger i had to get a sim card and i also had to change my money into the local currency so number one i didn't have a i didn't have a, a sim card so how am i going to request uber from the hotel to wherever i need to be i'm going to use the hotel wi-fi show and then when i get to where i needed to buy the things how am i going to request uber back because there's no Wi-Fi there and I don't have a SIM card. That was challenge number one. So your girl, what your girl did, I went to Google. I went to Google and searched for uh, places that sell. What did I want first? I wanted a SIM card first because I thought if I had a SIM card, then okay. I can request Uber, I can buy data to go on Google if I needed to Google more things. So I went to Google, I found, I saw this place that sells SIM cards 
and then I requested an Uber to there. Mind you, as I, as I mentioned that when I left the hotel, that means I leave my connection to the world because I have no SIM card and I have no internet access. So, got into my Uber, I went to the place. And when we get to the place, the place was closed. Luckily, my Uber driver asked me, what do I want? Like, and the people there, guys, they don't know how to speak English. Like, they don't even try. So my Uber driver could not speak English. And this is my first day in this country. So I was like, oh, wow, guys. I wanted to cry. But that guy was so nice to me. He, I told him I wanted a SIM card. I tried my best to, to, to explain what I wanted, that I wanted a SIM card. And then he said to me, okay. And then he got off the car. He went inside the store and they said they didn't have SIM cards. Your eye game was like, I can't, I'm, in a, I'm in a mess. This is a mess. And then he went on to Google Translate. That was the first time ever that I ever used all Google Translate. And then he went on to Google Translate and he searched like he went on there and said what do you want and then i wrote on google so that bala is only guys that i want a sim card i want to exchange my liam to the local currency and i also want a laptop charger wapendula wapala na ya google translate what i will be your chauffeur for today i'll take you wherever you want and get you and you get your things sorted i was like god is still with me so people there were very kind that was the first person that showed me kindness and i spent plus minus three hours with that guy going up and down Riyadh in saudi arabia and he was so patient with me and at the end of the day um he just for asked for some amount of money and i gave it to him and we parted ways so the people are very kind even though they are not willing to speak english but if you are down to earth and like kind to them or respectful to them they will give you the same respect back so i'm going to be going with foundation this is my favorite foundation it's the lancome tent idole ultra wear unfortunately i think i have mentioned this before that my friend got this for me when i was still pregnant and my skin was quite dark so that the people who test makeup at the store uh, gave me a darker shade but i do however usually mix it because i don't know where i can get these things anymore these were essence lightning makeup drops essence doesn't have these anymore so i just mix it with concealer or a lighter shade of my foundation i'm going to do that off screen and then come back guys i swear this video does not want to be shot by me today i have been trying it has cut like almost five, six minutes of my speech and I'm fed up. I am fed up. Okay. I don't even remember where I was, but you guys will please forgive me if I am doing a touch and go. But this technology today is not on my side. Let me have a drink. If you guys watch Omusa Kaula, he'll say, let me have myself a drink. Hmm. And try again. So, okay, guys, as I was saying, oh, I have got um, the Blend the Foundation, the Faka E Concealer. Which concealer did I use? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? And even... Oh, I have used... Um, avon power stay eight hour uh concealer i did get this concealer through a campaign trade exchange that i did with um avon and beauty bulletin i have however decided to stop using those two platforms beauty bulletin and brand advisor I am not in any way against anyone that is using them. I have used them, but I think my time is up. I'm grateful to them. They have taught me the, the essence of the professional side of content creation, con submitting your content on time, creating clean, beautiful, nice content, and all of those things. But I don't want to 
to participate in that and i was just saying that to my friend oh no no that uh -uh. um no no i'm grateful to them but i am done with them so i am so i got that concealer from that uh one of the campaigns that i did with them which was in partnership with avon so i really really like that concealer i think i am going to be buying it again when that one gets finished so this is what you see under my eyes on my then the bridge of my nose on my forehead and on my chin i am going to be i'm gonna let this dry a bit this is what i usually just do i'm gonna let this dry a bit what it does i'm going to put be putting um a contour this is an essence contouring palette that i got from this chem oh guys and then um the pencil that i was using to do my brows is this eye pencil from truth beauty which is a new beauty uh store that dance has under them dance clothing and it was 30 rand and it's i love it Sham. it is quality so i'm going to be doing that contouring i want to check if my camera is still rolling because technology hates me today all right it most definitely still is so i am going to be using i'm going to be contouring i'm going to be using this uh brush to apply the contour uh, on the bridge of my nose this is a brush i got from where i think it just came now yo. so yeah guys as i was saying about a saudi it was the language barrier the biggest problem for me because the people that are still very much arabic there and they prefer for things to stay that way i did say that i admire them and they are and that they are sticking to their guns and their language and their culture and everything but it feels like to me it's not accommodating or welcoming to the to the foreigners like i want to guys in hotels the stuff they can't speak english at the airport the staff they cannot speak english which baffles me like i don't understand how like how can you not speak english but who was also that are flying in on a daily basis from different countries that do not speak in this arab so that was the biggest uh challenge for me and one of my friends that stays and works in saudi he was saying to me that um, it's better in Riyadh where I was, the site that I was, where he is, um, when they go to the Red Sea, they even have to get a translator because the people there, like, no one can speak English. I was like, wow, guys, this is... then I've never traveled get out of South Africa before, uh so i don't know what i had expected but i really didn't expect um that so that was the biggest problem for me the language even at the bank guys at the bank the stuff there was like speak arabic and i'm like how the hell am i supposed to speak arabic now i speak english guys speak closer uh then didn't lower it too. sorry guys for that I've got the windows open because it is super hot. So, yes, it is super hot. It is hot, hot, hot. So I am contouring um my face, my jawline. Guys, get my guy. I don't have makeup techniques. If you see me doing my makeup, I'm going to go to the nine or two and sixteen. Please don't come for me, child. Please don't come for me. So, yeah, guys, language, language, language. And everything around you, like around the town, in the city, yeah, everything is written in Arabic. I swear. Everything is written in Arab. So, I definitely condemn them, shame for, for, for doing that. Their religion, their culture is rich, their tradition, their everything. Like, I really, really, really uh, commend them for that. If as South Africa, we stuck to that, 
I guess it's not really as much as we do. Komanye amazu, but Tina Saha, we bend over backwards for tourists and people that are coming into our country. That's one thing I loved, loved about Saudi. They do not bend over backwards for anybody. When you come into their to their country, you follow their rules, and if you don't want to, you can pack your bags and go back home. Alrighty, lovelies. Now I'm going to be blending this. Uh, the um, what is this thing? Equantone concealer. So that's what I am going to be doing. Alright, number five, six, or whatever. The food. The food in Saudi, they do have their cultural food, obviously. They are staple foods, uh, which was, um, what did I have that was originally from Saudi? I had lamb kapsa, kapsa, kapsa. That was amazing. I had that on my flight from, from Riyadh to Sakaka. I had that. That was nice. It's like lamb and rice and mixed with two bugu, bugu biryani, khanji, bugu. and then they got a sauce, your hummus sauce, your flatbread, your, of course, all of that on the tray. So that was really, really nice. I think that was the only Arabic food that I had. What else did I have? I did have Arabic coffee, which by the way, I didn't know that in, um, in Saudi, you are supposed to eat or drink with your right hand to show how grateful you are. So how did I find this out? One of the hospitals, um, I was offered, offered coffee, which is Arabic coffee. It comes, guys, in a cup this size. Like, it's a very small, but I... I So I guess that's why it comes in that small cup, but that's what they drink because... There's no alcohol most in Saudi, so they drink like a lot of coffee. So the people there are coffee lovers. So pro tip, if you do meet an Arabic person, specifically is it Saudi or whatever, but if you want to knock them off their feet, just offer them great coffee. Offer them the greatest coffee, the most expensive beans that you've ever came across, and I'm sure you'll knock their feet off. So I was offered this coffee. Um, I had the coffee on the flight. The first time I had it was on the flight from Saka from 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 Riyadh to Sakaka, and I was like, "What? What the hell is this?" And then I was offered a cup at one of the hospitals that I went to, and then there I am. I don't know what I was doing. I had a coffee phone with my right hand and then i was holding this coffee cup with my left hand and then he said to me no you can't do that sister you're supposed to eat and drink with your right to show how grateful you are I'm like mm, okay that's a nice thing to know so um i really enjoyed that learning about the culture the food the drinks and everything else that they do enjoy so the food the food, so they also have a lot of shawarma, so it's not shawarma South Africans, it's shawarma. So they have a lot of shawarma as well, which is pretty cool, that was nice, that's the other food that I had, that was like a staple of theirs. And then they do have KFC, Burger King, McDonald's, and, and, and all that American stuff that we used to South Africa, so I had quite a lot of that as well. So the food, there is variety and i also have this amazing seafood boil guys if you do watch my, my my vlogs my saudi vlogs you will see that seafood boil i always dream about it it was amazing i've never had a seafood boil before i had that both seafood boil but that was the best thing i've ever eaten like that was nice so the food was very really enjoyable there was a lot to choose from and yeah you were not forced to stick to the arabic food if you don't want to but if you did want to try a lot more of which i didn't because when i did go to one of the 
Arabic restaurant, I wasn't met with a lot of kindness because I wanted to order the same lamb capsa that I had on the flight and I was speaking, talking, and no one could understand a word of English in that restaurant. So I just took my shit and left because I was angry. So I ate American food. I ate your pizzas, your burgers, KFC, all of that. Because I was like, I'm not going to try another restaurant again. And then I'm met with the same attitude because no child, I'm not about that life. I'm not going to do that to myself and my confidence. See, what am I going to do now? Guys, my image up here and it's full of hell. Means anyone, should I do blush or eyeshadow or bake? Let me bake. And then you lie, you guys don't know the little guys, but eh, I do it because the girls are doing it. So this is a loose banana powder that I got from this camp. So yeah, okay, guys. The religion, the religion, the religion, the religion, the Islamic religion. So that is an Islamic country and everywhere you go, you will, you will find a prayer room because those people pray a lot. So you'll find a prayer room everywhere you go. So don't be stunned when you see a prayer room. I don't know if anyone can use it. Like if I'm a Christian, can I go in there and and like actually pray? I don't know. Please let me know down in the comment section below, guys, if you can really, if you can actually, if anyone like can usually use it. But I don't think anyone can use it. Um, but I doubt. I highly, highly, highly doubt. And they take their religion very seriously in Saudi. So you'll find most shops, stores, and places, they will close from 12 to what? But they will close from 12 to 4, I think. And then, then they'll be open after that. Um, they work, they do work generally long hours. So they work from from 9 to 11 p.m. but they break and will go from like 12 to 4 for prayer so Arabics they work like very long hours and they take their religion very very seriously and um, their work week I think I have discussed this before their work week does start from Sunday to their work week starts from sunday to sunday to thursday so their weekend starts friday saturday and friday and saturday and then sunday is back to work so on friday this is their praying day so we will hear those things the whole entire day that is what you will hear on the Friday. So they take their religion very seriously. So imagine, given now you are a staunch Christian and you go there and you find out that East Sundays are not observed. They are actually a work day, like a Monday. I am. So that shows you by that country, shame, they pride them, themselves with religion in their culture. And they don't care about you because imagine you're a staunch Christian and you have to go to work on Sunday because that's how their work week is um is like. So yeah, they they take their religion very seriously. You will see people in Jerusalem at the airport praying, and at the hospitals that I went to, you will see people praying. And yeah, so they take their religion, their culture, and everything that they believe in very, very, very seriously.
So that is one thing that I really like about them. I'm sure I've mentioned that like a million times. Um, as I said, love them to sticking uh, to who they are. I love the fact that they um, there's no alcohol served in that country as a whole. The whole country has no alcohol. They do not have pork or any pork products. And apparently they um, they do not invest in alcohol or pork or any pork products. So their money does not go to those two products or more other products that are actually haram in the Islamic um, laws or whatever. So I really, really like that. I really, really like that. I guess, but I didn't miss bacon. That's one thing I missed. I missed bacon and some shambombo. That is, yeah. Because I just need to blend this face until I am happy. So I might have myself a drink and then continue. Alright again my lovelies, okay. The other thing that I liked, I don't know what point I'm making now, point number ban ban, I have no idea, is the safety and no crime. <laughs> Guys, like, it felt so good to walk and not be scared. At first I was, because I was like, I'm not used to this, but I realized, but hey man, this place is pretty safe. Like, it is a very, 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 very safe in Saudi Arabia. As I said, that businesses operate up until 11 p.m. And that is amazing, guys. That is, like, really, 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 really amazing. And um, if you've seen my previous vlog, my last Saudi vlog, I did go to the salon to do my nails. And the ladies there, they open up until 11 and that's like their life because they know nothing else. Guys, I, I I will never stop rambling about that. That place is safe. You can leave your phone or your bag in that way and you'll find it right there. Like no one will take it. Or if they do, they'll just take it just to keep it for you. Like there's up uh, like there's like zero crime in that in that country. That's why it is the safest country in the world. Imagine that. So I really, really felt safe. I felt I felt protected. I even when you walk into the airport in Riyadh in Saudi, you feel safe. You feel protected. So I I really really recommend uh, applaud them for that. And I really recommend uh, Saudi as a country to visit and just see it for yourself, guys. Like see all of this for yourself so guys i am going to be going with um some what's this what's this what's this eyeshadow i am using this nude nude attitude nude eyeshadow palette this is what it looks like and this is what it looks like inside i definitely got this from this cam and this one is the truth beauty from dance clothing this is what the eyeshadow looks like and um i want some dark colors which i don't have here and i have them here i can guys i can i said yeah 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 people are watching but i just wanted some dark colors to go to the corner on this corner and the outside corner and then my inner corners i'm gonna make them lighter and then on here i'm gonna go through with like a purple situation that is my go-to eyeshadow look because i know nothing else so i'm just gonna take my dog i hope this comes out nice guys i really 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 hope that it comes out very nice 
So as I said, I'm going to be going on my outer eye with the dark corners. Okay, not to say over already. Oh Lord. Hmm. I think I must trust the process. Trust the process, guys. Trust the process. Okay, what else? The women's rights. Yo, what do I have about women's rights? I don't have that much information about the women's rights. And I don't want to spend any lengthy amount of time talking about that. Because it can become very, very controversial. And it can um, come off very, very judgmental. So I don't want to speak on that. I guess I am going to speak on it when I do have enough information about that topic because i don't want to judge i don't want to judge based on the fact that based on the three weeks that i spent there i mean that's not a lifetime or enough time to say okay i got this information and that information and sadly i was not there to um i wasn't there to research about that so my time there wasn't based off of on that so i just don't want to make any any ignorant comments or unsense insensitive comments towards the women and their rights in saudi but however as a tourist woman i was very 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 happy and i was not um i was not um zang and dinizele again anyway so i did whatever i wanted to do i was free to do all that i wanted to do i wasn't limited because of my gender i could do my work and i also could um go out in spaces that I would normally go out to in South Africa and I actually felt very much safer there than I would in my own country so I guess this is like a topic for another day the women's rights in Saudi Arabia when I have got enough information to speak on that topic so I am going um with the purple shade on the top of my eye. Guys, I said you must trust the process, right? This is what trusting the process looks like. But the girls looked happy to me in Saudi. Uh, the girls looked very, very well taken care of by their men. And they looked... um uh they looked they looked luxurious man they had as i did mention on my previous video that the girls they carry luxury brands like it's nothing they wear luxury brands like it's nothing although they are in their niqab what's that thing i think it's called a niqab but they are dressed to the gods like in very very expensive um brands and regalia and they drive very 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 nice cars so yeah yeah you guys i don't know why this thing is going to my face let me just clean it up I was still rolling.
Okay, okay, guys. And one of my favorites as well. I've got like a lot of faves, listen. Don't mind me. I've got like a lot of faves. Okay. Before that, let me finish up this eye off by applying this this one on the corner of my eyes on the inside so they got as i was saying that the women dressed to the nines like yo i've never seen so much burns worn by people in one space and the iphones like everyone has an iphone there guys even the uber drivers like everyone and they have the latest like not just iphones they've got like the latest iphones so it's a very nice country people are people are quite comfortable and i see why most um, it didn't say that most South African nurses, woo, this plant leather guy, most South African nurses, they go and, and work there. Like I totally get them. Because it brings me to my next point. It brings me to my next point, which is there is no income tax in Saudi Arabia. You get your money as it is on your pay slip. So that's like, wow, that's gold for me. There is no income tax. Um, coming back home and telling people about this, that in Saudi Arabia, there's actually like no income tax. Most people have been asking me then, how does the government uh, make money? Like, how does the government make money to sustain the country to sustain the roads and whatever and whatever like i don't know child i don't know but what i know is that saudi there is no income tax but the roads look maintained as hell unlike our government that collects all our tax money but does nothing but shove it down their throats and their big stomachs got this blusher which is like a two there's two colors inside this is also from truth beauty by dance clothing and i also have um this bronzer from truth beauty by dance clothing as well so i am however going to be applying those can walk and my yo i love this product guys i also got this jeffree star um so fucking gold skin frost from a campaign I did. This is amazing. Yo. This is this is gold, guys. Literally. So I am going to be going with this brush that I think I got from this game. This is an amazing brush, by the way. So before that, let me start with the blush. So where was I? What was I saying? What was I saying? Okay, there's no income tax. So, and that's about it. Like, that's, that's nice. That's nice. I found that very, very, very nice. Very, 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 very nice. Even though, okay, the, the, the citizens of that country might have their grievances with their government, but coming from South Africa, I was like, child, there is nothing you guys are, have to be complaining about because everything in this country is to do. Like, you get into it is on point because I was just saying to them that we are, I'm coming from load shedding. Do you even know what load shedding is? And they're like, no, I don't, we don't know what load shedding is. So I was like, bless your heart and bless your government because you see, and you know why you don't need load shedding and i know what load shedding is and it is nothing nice to have and guys the hospitals that i was mostly working at they were all government hospitals but you will never ever say because the condition is on point they look like a public a private hospitals as in south africa 
they look like private hospitals as a South African civilian. I can only imagine how their private facilities look like. That is if they even have one. That is if they even have those. So, okay. Oh. So, okay, guys, that is if they even have a, a private health facilities because those government facilities were on point and um in one of the hospitals that i was at i had to go into the royal suite the royal suite is where the royal family because that country is still very much um being led by a royal family by a prince i think so they even have a suite in the hospital for for the royal family which is quite cool which means that the the services are on point for the royal family to attend to those hospitals because in our country you will never see our government in the state hospitals because they know the condition that they are in and my question is why don't they make those hospitals to be in a condition that now Boba for when they have um, any health issues but they you you'll never see our officials going to those hospitals our officials have got medical aid and why do they have medical aid which means that they don't trust their own work i assume those are the things that I found to be really, 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 really disturbing. As much as I missed home, because I really, really, really missed South Africa when I was away. But some of the things that I've just mentioned now are one of the reasons why I didn't miss South Africa. Because I feel like our government really doesn't care for us. And they are not motivating the youth in any way to stay in South Africa and i was having a conversation with one of my colleagues and he was saying that if you do realize now in south africa it's not just white people that are leaving because back in the day it was mostly white people that were leaving our country but now everyone that gets the opportunity to leave they pack up their bags and leave so who is going to be left in this country building it up for the future generations because we all want to leave no one wants to stay here because the government isn't making it more very nice or motivational for us to stay here which is pretty sad which is pretty sad so government if you are watching this i'm coming i'm coming to bite if you know i love video i am coming to bite your ears because you don't listen i am coming to bite Oh, government of this country. I don't even have dreams for my son in this country, guys. I mean, if God would bless us with an opportunity for him to leave, I'll be like, no, no, pack up your bags and leave. Pack up your bags and leave. This country is not safe. This country is not safe. This country is just going to the dogs. Okay, guys, before I ramble long enough, I think that was my last point. That was my last point. I don't know which lip I'm going to do. I'm very much in love with the red lip. But I feel like I've got so much color going on on my face. And I don't want to do a red lip. I'm just going to do a lip gloss. Do my hair. And then I'm going to come back and say goodbye to you guys. guys i just laid my hair and then i put on some mascara and some eyeliner off screen and this is my final look hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as i enjoyed rambling for you and please do uh subscribe like comment and share i love you guys so so much and thank you so much for your support thus far I will see you in my next video. Bye.